Michael Barone is the senior political analyst for the Washington Examiner, a resident fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, and a Fox News contributor. Mr. Barone sat down with the Miller Center's Mike Deshays to discuss why all American citizens should be educated about America's founding principles and history. Michael, there's a growing momentum to reinvigorate education in this country about America's founding principles and history. Uh, share with us your thoughts about why this is so important for students to learn more about the country's founding and its history. Well, I think it's essential for American students to learn about the founding and America's heritage. Uh, we have a unique national story. We have a founding moment uh, or moments for a period of time, 1774 and into the 1790s and the Bill of Rights. Uh, we have, you know, an absolutely stellar cast of characters, of uh, people of great uh, intellectual ability and, and personal integrity and people who risked all and have thought very seriously about the, the problems and, and opportunities of self-government and of limited government. Uh, and um, it's a unique heritage. I think it's a gift to the world. There's something almost miraculous about the idea of having a group of people like Franklin, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Hamilton, uh, gathered in this uh, enterprise of American independence and constitution making and uh, we can all learn from them even today. You're the author of Our First Revolution, the remarkable British upheaval that inspired America's founding fathers, a history of the glorious revolution of 1688 and how it led to the American Revolution. Michael, how did the glorious revolution lead to the American Revolution? Well. I was prompted to write this book, Our First Revolution, because I noted, you know, how great the appetite of the reading public is for books about our founding fathers, whether it's biographies or descriptions or narratives or analyses, uh, and uh, that people uh, really have a hunger and a thirst uh, for this sort of information. Um, but I thought, you know, the founding fathers weren't writing on a blank slate. They were people who came from a certain part of history. They thought of themselves initially as Englishmen. Benjamin Franklin spent most of the 20 years before the American Revolution living in London, as a matter of fact, um, and begged the English ministers not to uh, give the colonists cause to want to separate themselves from Britain. When he failed in this, he returned to Philadelphia uh, and, uh, and joined the revolution. Uh, but they were coming from a particular heritage. And as I read in, you know, 17th century English history, British history, um, it seemed to me that these unusual events of 1688-89 referred to as a glorious revolution. This unusual set of events uh, really turned out to be a significant step forward for representative government, for guaranteed liberties, for global capitalism, and for uh, an anti-tyrannical foreign policy principles which have characterized uh, England and Britain ever since uh, and which have, have had a profound effect on the history of the United States. So those principles which advanced a significant step forward in 1688-89 and were never really reversed really helped to create the kind of world in which our founding fathers declared their independence, established a constitution and wrote a Bill of Rights and the kind of world we live in today. You're also the author of a book called Hard America and Soft America, in which you argue that America is divided into two camps, one part hard, one part soft. In your view, how do you see America 10 years from now, more of a hard America or a soft America? Well, in my book Hard America, Soft America, I defined hard America as the portions of life, uh, American life, where you have competition and accountability, and soft America is where you don't. Um, and the balance between hard and soft America changes over time. I mean, I've regarded our K through 12 education system largely as a soft system, not requiring uh, much competition or accountability by either students or teachers. Uh, and I was really prompted to write the book by the observation that it seemed to me American 18-year-olds are incompetent, but American 30-year-olds are the most competent 30-year-olds in the world. 
And I thought, well, from ages 6 to 18, they tend to live in soft America, schools that don't really require much of them. From ages 18 to 30, they live in hard America, whether it's selective universities, the military, private sector endeavors of various kinds, some public sector endeavors where there's competition and accountability. So there's inevitably a certain um, balancing and a certain ambivalence uh, in the relationship between hard America and soft America. So I think it's an open question how hard and how soft America is going to be in 10 years uh, in, in white particulars and that we're in the middle of uh, a political struggle now which will have uh, considerable bearing on that. Many Americans believe that politics today has become too partisan, that uh, politicians in Washington are more interested in attacking one another than solving the nation's problems. Do you agree with this sentiment or is this something that uh, we've seen pretty much throughout our history. Those who believe that we have bitter partisanship now, I would advise to read the political debates of the 1790s um, on the theory of you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, the partisanship was very sharp, it was very bitter, it was uh, included a lot of personal vilification, some of it factually based, some of it not so. Um, and. Uh, Many expressions from people on uh, both sides of the divide between the Federalists and the Republicans that uh, the other side was really going to destroy the nation. Uh, there was good reason for partisan dispute at that time because uh, we faced some very basic questions about how to organize the federal government on which there was principal disagreement between people like Hamilton and people like Jefferson. Uh, and also, uh, we found ourselves in a world where there was a world war going on between revolutionary and then Napoleonic France and, uh, and Great Britain. Uh, and there was a real split in the 1790s between those like Jefferson who felt we should be on the side of France and those like Hamilton who felt that we should be on the side of Britain. And you know, America's never really faced that situation quite again. We've never been within the orbit of a huge international conflict in which we have been so sharply divided between the two sides in that conflict. Um, that's something that could tear a nation apart very easily and I think that we have George Washington to thank for the fact that it did not tear apart the infant United States of America. Michael, many people say that uh, the whole effort on strengthening education in America's founding principles and history is really a K-12 through thing, if you will. But the Jack Miller Center believes that uh, our focus should be at the undergraduate college level. What are your thoughts about this? It has seemed that many of our academics and administrators uh, just don't value the founding uh, as highly as the American people do. And you can gauge how highly the American people do by looking at the bestseller status of books about the founders of Franklin, Washington. Adams, Jefferson, uh, Hamilton. Uh, you know, if you had predicted uh, 20 years ago that uh, you know biography of John Adams would be mandatory beach reading a few summers ago, uh, people would have thought you were crazy. But in fact, that uh, turned out to be when David McCullough's uh, biography of John Adams was published. And so there's a real hunger for this sort of thing. And I think if the universities are dropping these courses and not encouraging scholars here, they're really making a major mistake that's harmful to our country um, because we have a unique story to tell. Um, it's not a matter of us bragging that we're so wonderful. Uh, that you know, It's that we stand on the shoulders of giants, that uh, we are fortunate enough to be the inheritors of a great heritage by some really extraordinary men in which some extraordinary women played a part as well, which is unique in the history of the world and which has been a shining example of freedom and limited government to very many people in the world. I think that to neglect the founding period is to neglect something that is extremely important in the history of our government, on which every citizen should want at some time or another to reflect. Uh, because the principles that the founders stood for, the arguments that they made, the dilemmas that they confronted and attempted to deal with, um, those are full of instruction for all of us. This has been a Jack Miller Center digital media presentation. For more information, visit thejackmillercenter.org.